today we're talking about due season. Due season. The song that was rendered actually said it all. My tomorrow must be greater than today. It doesn't matter what I face. It doesn't matter how I cry. It doesn't matter what I'm going through. All that I know and that is certain in my heart is that my tomorrow will be greater than today. Say it once again. My tomorrow will be greater than today. Say it until it clicks. My tomorrow shall be greater than today. That will be our portion in Jesus' name. Our text is taken from Leviticus chapter 26 and verses 3 to 4. I am mindful of the time and so I might I want you, as I say the scriptural text, to open to it. I will, I will recite it from where I am, so to make time, so that we can save time. Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 3 to 4 says, If you follow my decrees and are careful to obey my commands, I will send you rain in a season, and the ground will yield its crops, and the trees their fruit. In the name of Jesus. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9 says, Let us not be, become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, in due season, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. It says, it's conditional. We can only reap when we do not give up. You know, our due season will come when we keep at doing what we need to do. Because there will be... A time elapsed in between your due season and the level you're, you are right now. Where you are right now is not, your, is not your final bus stop. It doesn't matter what you are going through at this time. Always learn to confess, to profess to yourself that this is not my final bus stop. This is not the, the, the last thing that I'll be experiencing. Greater things are still coming my way. Good things are coming my way. It might feel as if I am stuck at this time. But it doesn't matter the way I feel. All that I know, I will keep on confessing the word of God until I see that which God has spoken regarding me come to pass. And as you hold on to the word of God, it will come to pass in Jesus' name. Brethren, the word of God is so powerful. For me, I refuse to believe anything that is outside of God's word for my life. Even when I am going through stuff, I tell the devil, I say, listen to me. It doesn't matter how hard you beat me, I will stand up tall. And I raise my shoulder against the devil at all times. And my children will say like, you spiritualize everything. This one is not about spirituality. I'm like, everything is spirituality. Life is spiritual, brethren. And you got to take it the way it is. If you think like, oh, no, this is just happening for fun, is a lie. It's a joker. Life is spiritual, and we have to address it in a spiritual manner. If you wake up, let me take this, this bottle of water, and if something is suggesting to me that this bottle of water is going to drop, and I do not stand against it spiritually, it will. That is how life is. If something is suggesting to you that you are going to have an accident and you do not rise up in your spirit man to say, accident is not my portion, that person is going to have an accident. Let me give you a scenario. There was a day the Lord showed me a scenario like a trance. You know, I wasn't actually sleeping and I saw that thing. I, I was driving and then I was backing off, you know, and I just heard, boo. I'm like, what happened? You know, I just took it for granted. Though I pray, but I didn't pray well. I didn't pray true. I tell you, the following day, I went for training. Where I parked my vehicle, we were done with the training, and I was backing off. I didn't know that there was a, because my vehicle was really high, I didn't know there was a vehicle behind me. I looked at the bar before, you know, backing off. Do. But I don't know what happened. God has shown me that already. I backed off and I heated that vehicle. You know, the first thing that I said was, Father, I am sorry. Because it showed me. But I took it for granted. So you want to say like, oh, it, 
He just showed me that for fun. No. He showed it to me so I will pray about it to avert that to happen. But due to my own negligence, it happened. Right? So till tomorrow, I will tell myself, I don't take anything, anything whatsoever. Even if I want to eat food to, 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 to that level. If I want to eat food and then something is telling me that this is covetousness, this is gluttony, you are okay. But like my, my tummy could still take some food, right? Is it a sin to eat? It's not a sin to eat. But in your nurturing your relationship with God, you got to listen to what he's telling you. If you do eat it, it becomes a sin to me. And it becomes a weight. You know, all things are lawful unto me, but not all things are expedient. And because not all things are expedient, I'm not going to subject myself to what are not expedient, even though they are not sinful. Is that making sense? The Lord will speak to every one of us in Jesus' name. So I was saying everything in life is spiritual. And if we're going to reap in the future, if our tomorrow is going to be all right, if our due season is going to come, then we need to be engaging ourselves between now and our tomorrow in the things that we're supposed to be doing. We won't just fold our hands and like I know for sure my tomorrow will be all right. That is a wishful thinking. Wishful thinking is different from confessing the word of God until you break forth in the realm of the spirit. You know, the grammarian who says, if wishes were horses, beggars will ride. So, wishful thinking is taking no one nowhere. The Lord will help us as we nurture our relationship with God in Jesus' name. What is due season? Due season could be said to be God's timing. And it's, God's timing is never too late. Neither is it too soon. It's timely. It's on track. It is not my time. It is God's own time. Due season is God's own time. Of course, we will pray. Of course, we will engage. Of course, we will nurture our relationship. But God will do what he will do in his time. It says, in his time, in his time, he makes all things beautiful. In his time. Lord, please show me every day as you are teaching me your way that you do just what you say in your time. He will do what he says in his own time. And what you and I will need to do is to be able to exercise patience and constantly be in his presence until he brings to pass that which he has said he will do. The Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 8a. It says, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. In Jeremiah chapter 29 and verse 11, it says, my thoughts towards you are the thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. God has his own expected end for you and I. In Psalms 102 verse 13, it says, thou shall arise. And have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the said time is here. So if you want to put your name in there and say, That shall arise and have mercy upon blessing for the time to favor her. Yea, the said time is here. Those are the, the time for God to favor you is now. And you can actually, you know, step up to have that time to come to pass in God's own time so that the devil doesn't delay you any longer. I pray the devil will not have upper hand in our lives in Jesus' name. Galatians 6, 9, as we have read, says we will reap whatever we sow. If you sow prayers, you will reap it. If you sow goodness, you will reap it. If you sow togetherness, you will reap it. If you sow submission to your husband, you will reap it. You know, they won't know when they will just, you know, give to you. Here's my credit card. Just go and spree, go shopping. Go do whatever you want to do because you are sowing obedience and you are sowing submission. So, brethren, these scriptural references, they are key in our lives as children of God. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verses 1 to 8 says, There is set time for everything in life. A time to be born, a time to die, a time to wake up, a time to go and sleep, a time to keep quiet, a time to speak. So, these are all keys in our lives. 
due season is God's time. God is immortal and sovereign. He does what he wills. The Bible says in Psalms 1, 1, 1, 1, 1 5 verse 3, it says it sits in the heaven. He does what he wills. He sits there, he does what he wills. So ours, as children of God, is to key in into what he wills that he wants to do with our lives. Because his thoughts towards us, they are the thought of peace. And Ecclesiastes 3.11, like I said, it says, He makes all things beautiful in his own time. Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says, And we know, and we know that all things work together for good. For them that love the Lord, to them who are the called according to his purpose. I t- One of the favorite scriptures in the Bible is this Romans chapter 8 verse 28 for me. Anytime, even though if those situations, they are not favorable, I tell the devil, this is the word of God for me. I know you might mean it for evil, but God is going to turn it around for my good. Because I know that all things will work together for my good. Even if my children are misbehaving or doing whatever they want to do, I tell the devil, say this one is an act of God. I put here in here. It doesn't matter what the devil tries. You are going to serve the Lord. You are a pastor. I decree into their lives. I say at the end of the day, all things will work together for my good. And you know it's been working. The word of God works. It's working. And it will always work. You only need to engage the word of God. Most of the time, the devil wants to interrupt our lives. And he, he wants to be cloud us. He doesn't want us to see the efficacy. And the efficiency in the word of God. And it will put so many things. It will cause, you know, at times when, one thing that I like about my profession, there's, a, there's one of this um, evidence-based theory that we call CBT. And it, it, it has a kind of relevance to my faith because we believe in the power of the word. And CBT also believes in like processing thoughts to flip it and let you know like, okay, you are thinking you are going to die. What, what, what makes you feel like dying is the next option for you? So you, you flip it around and then you process the thought together. And before you know it, like, it's true. What, what, why am I thinking this is the next thing? So brethren, there is power in the word of God. So summarily, we was saying this morning, do you can mean something that is rightfully belonging to you. And you need to know how to claim what is your rightful, you know, entitlement. So, do you mean something that rightfully belongs to me, that belongs to you, something that is owed you, something that is, that, that is right for you. But if you don't know that these things are right for you, the devil will want to manipulate you, so you think, like, probably it is not meant for me. And season is a special period or a time characterized by a particular circumstance or future. So, due season is a special period, brethren, or an appointed time when we receive that which we have expected, that which is owed us or rightfully belong to us. So that is your due season. That thing that belongs to you, the devil cannot take it from you, provided you know your right. You know where we are. We tell people about right, 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 right? We tell them, oh, it's your right. That is what, that is what I teach my client anyways, for them to stand up to their right. Yeah. And Here we are. We are talking to ourselves. Stand up to your right, brethren. You stand up to your right as a child of God. It is enough for the devil in your life manipulating you, giving you sorrow, giving you trauma, and making you to feel like you can never be better than who you are. Who says that? If God has not said it, then it is not valid. So what is only what God says that is valid in our lives, brethren. What our God says, the word of God, is what is valid in your life and in my life. So we need to stand up to the fact that God can do what he says he will do. God can do what he says he will do. In John chapter 16 and verse 33, he assures us of victory. He lets us also know that there will be tribulations in this world. 
Because being a Christian doesn't mean that everything is going to be rosy and rosy and rosy. There will be times in your life that you are going through challenges of life. And natural fact, I tell people challenges of life are part of life. If, 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 if everything is just going rosy and you don't have your own moment, that you want to question yourself like, is everything okay with me? So challenges of life, they are part of life. But when those challenges are coming up, then there's the need for you and I to go into the word of God. Now, Father, I know this is what you say. You say, I should be of good cheer because you have overcome the world. Then I receive victory that you have assured me. And you claim that victory everywhere that you go. There was a time I, I was working in a place. And then my supervisor was like trying to be a town in my flesh. And I'm like, you know, anytime we have conversation and all the likes, I will go to the washroom and I will make decree and I will call the name. No, this is me. I'll call the name. I'll say, you, this person, hear the word of the Lord. When you see me, you see the glory of God. I silence everything inside of you that wants to make this place uncomfortable for me. I claim this office in the name of Jesus. You know what? At the end of the day, that supervisor actually resigned. Yeah, because every day is like, oh, look at me. Me, I bubble with life. Well, you, you don't have to. We are all different, right? We are made differently. So, if you are, if you feel like maybe somebody is happy and it becomes an issue for you as an individual, then you need to step up for yourself and take up the responsibility like this is who I am. And because someone is not happy, of course you can pray for that person who is not happy. Maybe he or she is going through one thing or the other. You can pray for that person. But it will be wickedness for that person to not want to see your face in that office. Because that office is meant for everybody. Right? So if you keep quiet and you do not do what you need to do, and then at the end of the day, they fire you, it's not going to be the responsibility of God. Am I making sense? It's not going to be the responsibility of God because you know what you need to do and you did not do it. Right? So in, in the office at the end of the day, they brought in another supervisor who has a lot of vibes. Happy, wanting to listen to everybody, and it becomes a better place for everyone. So God has placed you where you are to do the right thing. So that, you know, the devil do not manipulate the atmosphere, and then they get you out of the place, and then you are blaming God. Why did you allow this, this to happen? It's because we are not taking our rightful position where we are. There's a need for you to use the word of God. Claim the word of God for anything at all. When you are going out in the morning, load your life, deck your life with the word of God. You know, look for the scripture. Let it be, let, let it be like a routine, ritual in your life, religious right. That in every day I need to study the scripture. For me, the open heaven is my anchor. And it is a must. If I don't, then the the day becomes so miserable for me as a person. So when you take charge, when you take charge of your day, then you see things turning around. When we sing, I can see everything turning around for my good. It is, you have to take your own rightful position before things can turn around for your good. That was an example of what happened in my own workplace. People do not, I do not need to share with people. They don't understand because, you know, I just discovered that the lady just spotted me. I'm like, what is your problem? I am here. We, we were hired. Though you are my supervisor, you, you, we, we are hired by the same person. But for my manager, my manager was like, you know what, blessing? For whatever that is going to make you comfortable here, we will do. It's also a Caucasian. Whatever that is going, because you know the thing is, before you get into any atmosphere, Take charge of that atmosphere. Take charge of the heart of the people. That this place, I have come to possess this place. One of the things that I pray when I came to Canada, I said, Lord, I am not going to take up a job that is going to involve the wicked. And I say, Father, you will help me. You will possess. The Bible says, wherever the soul of your feet shall tread upon, the Lord will give unto you as an inheritance. Lord, open up this Canada for your daughter. What I would do that will make me to be available to serve you. You will grant it unto me. And brethren, 
I am not saying those, of course, because those who were nurses, you know, healthcare professionals and all the stuff, there's the need for us to do shift work and all the like. It is what it is. We all got to work to pay our bills. But what I'm saying is that you shall have whatever you say. That is, for me, what I think will work for me and will work for my ministry and will work for my home. Say, Father, Lord, please let this be my portion. And he worked it out. I have never worked the weekend, except I choose to, I want to go and pick a sheet. What am I saying? What is the level you are right now? You need to know yourself. You need to know the God who you serve and is able to do whatever you decree. Say we shall decree a thing and it shall be established and light shall shine upon our path. In John 15 and verse 10 to 11, there is a kind of interconnectedness between obedience and blessing in the life of the believer. It says the land shall yield its increase. Everything is conditional in the word of God. You need to do your part. I need to do my part. When I do my part, God for sure will do his part. He is God. Numbers 23 verse 19, I guess. It says God is not a man to lie. Neither the son of man to repent. Whatever he has said, he will do it. He is not a liar. And that is why we do need to take the word of God back to God. It says the trees of the field, if they will yield their fruit. The trees of the field, the good in the land, the good in Regina, they must yield their fruit unto you. Because you belong to God. Because this city belongs to you. Because you are an apple of the high of the law. So whatever you tell the law, I was sharing with the women yesterday. I said, if paraventure what you are doing right now, you are not too okay with it. You are not pleased with it. You are not happy there. You can tell the law. And there is no sentiment in picking up whatever profession we want to pick up. You can pick and choose. That is one of the things I appreciate where I live. You can leave one job today. Get another one tomorrow. Leave one. Leave one next week. Before you know it, get another one two weeks after. You can pick and choose. So if you have the opportunity to pick and choose, then why don't you call unto God and tell the Lord, this is what I want. So if you, if, if you are in a workplace environment that you feel is toxic and you feel that is not for you, I don't like any toxicity around me. You can choose. I'm like, I don't want to be here. Or you can choose and pray like, okay, whoever that is making this place to be toxic, Father, I uproot in the name of Jesus. And God will do it. I just told you my own scenario. God will do it. You know, within a thing called of it's just like, okay, I resign. I'm like, yeah, so be it. If you want, so be it. Because the God needs to make the place conducive for his own children. So, brethren, it will cause every good in this place to work for your good in Jesus' name. But while we're talking about due season, we cannot be talking about due season without talking about waiting. Hello? Hello, everyone. I know many of us do not want to wait, but there would always be the place of waiting before... It, it, there would always be the place of waiting in the journey of life before your due season comes. We all literally do need to wait for everything in life, except you want to be a microwave, you know, you just want it now, or you want to take your credit card, you just want to go and spend it while you could actually wait, like, okay, I could wait, my, my, my pay could come, and I could get a better deal, right? Everything in life has to do with waiting, and what do we understand by waiting? It is trusting God. Waiting brings forth, it gives birth to new life. With waiting, relationship is restored. With waiting, the, the sick is healed. And our miracles are fulfilled when we wait. Waiting, like I said, is part of life. God's promises assure us, though, that we won't have to wait forever. We won't have to wait forever. Because in due season, it will cause what we are asking to come. When we do what we need to do. Is it obedience that we need to do? We have to do it, and then our due season will come. And you know what? In life, the quickest way or the best way or the assured way to fail 
is to give up. And that is why you and I, we will not give up. Tell yourself, I will not give up. I refuse to give up. Because when you do not give up, you will get what you want. You will get what you want. I give you a testimony. When I was courting my husband, it took us like seven years before we actually finally, okay, we're going to do this. And one of the reasons why he actually came through was because my, my husband never gave up. To me, I felt like, you can. No, you can't. You, you know fit. Don't come near me. <laughs> right? But he said like, Mike, I will come near you. I am stuck with you until you say yes. And at the end of the day, it happened. Because he knew what he wanted and he kept praying about it and it happened. So the same thing, if God actually wants that thing for you and you are tenacious enough and you keep praying to him, he will bring it to pass. It's not an unrighteous judge. Our, the, the, the song that we sang this morning says, my tomorrow will be all right. It will be better. I know it for sure. I was sharing with the ladies. I said when I came, I worked in warehouses to clean the toilet for them. I don't care. Like, I know that was not going to be my bus stop. It was not going to be my bus stop. My husband was a full-time pastor, and we, we just, maybe we had two, three members. So who is going to pay? Who is going to take care of us? I'm like, I will do what I need to do, you know, to get the home going. So far, I'm not stealing. But inside of me, I know there's a giant inside of me to get me to where I am going. So I kept trusting the Lord. But for now, I will do what I, whatever I can do. And I was happy with it. I wasn't making my husband miserable because uh, he, he, cannot, um, he, he cannot afford what we needed at that time. But we just like, and I, my kids were like, Mom, what is happening? Why do we have to come here? I'm like, excuse me, it is what it is. This is where we have to be right now. This is what has to happen. They didn't understand. They felt like, you know, children, probably they are in one level before and you know everything is rosy and then they find themselves in the other side of the world like why do we have to do this where did where did we come in the first instance so it was my duty i kept like teaching them things will be fine we'll soon move out of this place we'll get a better place we'll get a better job things will be fine and today now i tell them remember when you used to ask me this question, remember now. Now they have forgotten that they were even asking those questions. So brethren, what are we talking about? There will be things in our lives that feels as if God is not fair to us. People will even say life is not fair. Why are these people enjoying? Why are you doing this? No! <laughs> Your own time is coming. You only need to keep on telling yourself that my time will come. My time will come. So do not give up. Never you give up in anything you are going through. Even if your children were giving you tough time. Our son was the kind of a guy who was sold out to basketball. And between that and, you know, like my husband is not a basketball person. Like you are not going to do basketball. And the son was like, this is what I'm going to do for life. <laughs> you know, there was that altercation and all the life. But I kept like, you know, let's just keep trusting the Lord. If it is what God wants, God will make it to come to pass. God will speak to this child. Don't, don't let us. At times, my husband will want to do, ah, you know, our daddies. You want to do, this. you must do what I asked you to, to do. And then me, I will be doing underground. You know what? I will play this one. Please don't be offended. I will talk to the son. Please listen to what your dad is saying. You know that kind of a thing. Today, they are best of friends. And you know, at, at the end of the day, the child was able to make his own decision in such a manner that nobody was affected. So what are we talking about? God will make everything beautiful in his own time. And if you are able to take on the word of God for your life, you will see it coming to pass. So don't envy Sister Hay. It might be Sister Hay's time now. Sister B's time is coming. Brethren, my sisters, don't let us don't give our husbands any problem. Just keep on looking unto God, who is the author and the finisher of your faith. He will do it in his own time. You will pray until you pray through, and then that your husband will even look at you and be proud of you like, is this my wife? Because you are doing what you need to do in the closet. And as we do that, 
the Lord will honor our faith in Jesus' name. Remember, a man will reap what he sows. So if you are sowing prayer, you will reap it. If you are sowing diligence, you will reap it. If you are sowing tenacity, you will reap it. You know, I, 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 I mentioned to the, to the members in my church, I'm like, you know what, I was actually doing all these things, you know, like I wanted to go back to school, I wanted to do this, I was doing it, just, you know, multitasking, go to church, because our church is just starting and all the life, go to church, you know, do school, do mom, do wife, do community member and all the likes. Many of them didn't even know I was doing all those stuff. So when I had my first degree, they're like, when did you do it? I'm like, eh. I did it. God helped me. So what are we talking about? And you know, he came in such a manner that now I can talk to my ladies like, if God helped me to do it, you can do more. It's not a matter of age. Like I was sharing with people, it was actually 32 years that I left NYSC before I went back to school. 32 years that I have been in school. But then I dusted my brain. People were like, oh, you're not going to cope. This is not, I'm like, excuse me. Give me space. Give me space. You will see whether I'm able to do it or not. And it came to pass. Like, people, even when we do tests or this and that and that, and I came, came home and tell my children I, I got the score. They were like, mom, how did you get that? I'm like, it happened. God can make it to happen. Because we are not dollars. We are not. But most of the time, the devil, the devil will want to terrorize you and tell you that you are not able to do it. But you can do it. You only need to tell yourself, like, I can do it. And then put, put in the work. Put in the work. Don't just say with the word of mouth. When you need to keep sleepless nights because you want to study, do it. And at the end of the day, it happens. So I am able to encourage other people that they can do it. So when we have new people come to the church, I encourage them. It might not make sense now. Don't feel so bad. It will happen when God wants it to happen. Cooperate with your husband and let's see what we can do to make things to happen. At that time, I couldn't even do much because I need to be there for my children. And I need to be there for the ministry to cause things to work. So I'm not going to say I must go back to school because I know my husband cannot even afford that at that time. So I just waited. I pushed it aside because, you know, there's time for everything. So when it was a deal season for me, God made it to, ha to happen. So the same thing, we are here today to remind ourselves of things that we know or probably to charge us about things that we do not know that God is able to make things to happen for us. You know, as if that was not enough, while I was even rounding up my, of course, you know, there was opening door right away before. I didn't even have to wait for one day after my degree, that I got, you know, that I got that job. And it was such a one that got like, oh, this is my real boat. But while that was going on, I'm like, okay, I could actually go for my master's right away. And I signed up for it. My members didn't know. People didn't know that I was doing it. But I would burn, I would burn the candlelight. Like, this has to happen. And at the end of the day, God made it to happen. And people were like, excuse me, what do you want? What? What do you need this one for? I'm like, I don't need it, but I just want it. <laughs> Is it covetousness? Is it covetousness? Is it greediness? I want it. I just want it, and I want to do it. Right? Because I want to enhance my life. So that no supervisor will now come and like, oh, blessing, you don't have masters, so we can't keep you in this agency. I'm like, excuse me. Some of them don't even know that I have it till now. So I will just bring out the joker when they're like, ooh. Yeah, I'll just bring it. That is what we need to do. Make room. Prepare yourself for opportunities. So that when opportunities come, you just seize it. Don't wait until it comes before you're like, oh, let me go and look for this. Prepare yourself. People were like, ah, my pastor, you're going to do PhD now. I'm like, yeah. Why not? We can do it. The Lord would help every one of us in Jesus' name. But that has to be in his due season. Because at the time that I'm doing it now, it's, it, it's God's own due season for me. I didn't have to struggle. I don't have any boy that I'm, no child that I'm looking after. They are all on their own. I am on my own. Like I was sharing with the women, my husband went to Calgary for an event. 
Me, I'm here in Regina. My son in Vancouver. My daughter in uh, family. So, no stress. But it is God's own due season. If at the time that we came, like some years back, I wanted to do that, it will cause chaos in the family, right? The Lord will give us wisdom in Jesus' name. Fooling oneself is to think that you will reap without sowing. We have to sow before we can reap. So if you want to reap without sowing is foolishness. And we are not foolish people. We are people of wisdom. The Bible says in James chapter 1 and verse 5, says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth unto men liberally and upbraideth not. We all do need the wisdom of God. And that is why we need to ask from the Lord so that he will give unto us. There is no reaping. There is not going to be any reaping without sowing. There, there was an example of a man that I read named Michael Shannon. He was a pediatrician, and there's another guy, Chris Trockey, a firefighter. This pediatrician actually saved the life of this 3.2 pound premature baby, you know, by walking around the clock and beating the odds to stabilize him. In 2011, that was when that happened. But this same pediatrician was being inside a burning vehicle in an accident. You know, he was pinned down in a burning vehicle after a car collision, but he was saved by this same guy, firefighter, whom he saved his life like 30 years ago. He never knew. It was when they talked about it that he now like, oh, this actually happened 30 years ago. So there's nothing we are saying now that we will not reap. Oh. Brethren, mommies in the house, you will reap the fruit of your labor in Jesus' name. When your children are making waves, there will be no strange woman that will want to come and sit down in Jesus' name. When your children are making waves, a strange woman will not come and say, because when you are eating Obono, when you are eating Ilala Sekbo, when you are walking, cleaning the toilet, that woman was not there. Oh. So when your children are making waves, anybody that wants to say they want to come. Ah. Holy Ghost fire. Ah. <laughs> Me, I'm telling you the truth, oh. Ah. I will pray the prayer when my children are making waves. My gale, eh? Ah. Hey. My shoe, eh? Ah. And then the way that I will walk. That I have sown, I must reap. Oh. So anybody that says that I, I'm not going to reap, God will keep them. He will keep them indoor. He will keep them indoor. Because when my husband was so slim, when his cheeks enter, that he was not handsome. No, I'm saying the truth. Oh. When, when he was so skinny like this, they didn't see him. Anybody that wants to see pastor now. Holy Ghost fire. That is the truth. Too. Because we are sowing. Women, women, good women. You know, Proverbs 31 women. Souls. We labor. We don't want any evil thing to happen to our husband. We will pray and pray and pray. Father, elevate my husband. Settle my husband. Provide for him. Father, help my children. And you are doing all those things. And now it's time for things to be okay. Then people are now looking at you. Or they are saying like, oh, she's so dressy. Eh, when I am using my mom's uh, gele to sew, where were you? Wait, no, that is the truth. Right? When you are just changing that, even like your husband just has two shirts. I tell people, I tell the young adult, I tell them. Like I can count the number of shirts that my husband had when we got married. Yeah. And so nobody can brag around me because we started all together. We know each other's history. Right? So that is why, please, let us stand with each other because things will be better. Don't write that man off. Things will be okay. Things will still be good. So far, you join us together, you will get to where you are going in Jesus' name. We have so many 
biblical examples in the scriptures of people that waited. Moses waited. Abraham waited. Lazarus waited. Lazarus actually was in the tomb for three days before he got brought back to life. God could have healed him, you know, or God could have actually, yeah, could have healed him and never allowed him to go into, into, into the grave. But he allowed him to be there for three days. What about King David? King David waited for 20 years before he became king. So if you need to wait now, wait. So that you have that genuine, you know, solid miracle. So and if God is making you to wait, it's not because he's a wicked God. It's because he wants to give you an outstanding miracle, an outstanding breakthrough. Right? I tell people, like, there was a time I had to be doing a job that I was not actually too happy with. I go in the morning, like, 9 o'clock, come back at 6 at night, and the very moment that I get to work in the childcare, you have to put your phone in the cupboard. You don't have access onto it, and you'll be on your toes until you are done. Until you are done for the day. And by the time I get back to the house, I am just so, I was so fucked out, like, and I keep telling myself, like, this is not the thing. I need something better. But now, I can tell you, if I feel like mentally I am drained, I could call in sick and tell my boss I am not coming to work. And so be it. Because they know I'm a workaholic. I come to work, like, literally, five days in a week. And I have tons of sick time that I will not even care to use. But if I feel like, okay, today is, I am not physically sick, but I am mentally drained. And I give a call. They won't ask me like, oh, you have to report at work or whatever. They better they'll just cancel my client. Oh, your therapist cannot see you today. And so be it. That is what I want. It was unlike where I was working that even if you are dying, they will tell you, you still have to come to work until we find somebody to cover your shift. So God can take us to that point where he settles you. Three truth about waiting. Waiting can be painful. Waiting can be painful. It can be sorrowful. It can be grievous. That is one thing that we need to know about waiting. Another thing we need to know about waiting is that it brings hope in view. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3. Habakkuk 2 verse 3. says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it will speak. It will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. Because... It will surely come. It will not tarry. That is another truth we need to know about waiting. And the last truth, we have a lot of them, but just for time factor. The last one is that it brings forth the awaited promise. It brings forth the awaited promise. In Psalm 27 and verse 14, it says, Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart. Wait for the Lord. What are the reasons why God makes us to wait? It reveals what's really in our hearts. If we are genuine, it will reveal it. If you are really a child of God, or if you want it just for show off, or you want it to serve the Lord, if you want it to, to, to be a role model to other people, he knows why you want what you are asking for. In John 11 verse 21, Martha was actually accusing Jesus. You know, like if you had been here, our brother would not have died. And the sins, in the same vein, some of us, probably at times, we, we, we might be accusing the Lord. Like, why are you making me to wait this long? You know, and we don't understand that God does things in his own timing. It will not always be in our own time frame, anyways. If we are not careful, that is why we accuse God. You are delaying me. You are making this to happen. But he knows the end from the beginning. He knows what is good for you. And so if you have to wait for any reason, he knows the best and is doing the best for you. You might not like it waiting now because it's not for you to know why you are waiting. God can choose to 
reveal it to you, and it can choose to like just keep mute about it. But the thing is, like, it will make it to happen when it wants to make it to happen. But then, because we know it will make it to happen when it wants to make it to happen, that doesn't mean we fold our hands and like, let me just whatever is God, let Him do whatever He wants to do. No, we are not going to put on that attitude. And here is the best part: as we wait on God, He is doing a quick work in us that can only be done as we wait. And just because we are waiting does not mean that we have missed it or that we have offended God or that uh, maybe you are sinning or that like he doesn't want to see your face. No, he is God. He does the best for us at all times. And brethren, I want us to know that there is danger in not waiting. When we do not wait, we make mistakes. Right? You know, like I was sharing with us, like when I was cutting my husband, some people were like, oh, he will go and talk to other people. I'm like, and, and so? Ah, me, I am hot keiko. Let him go. Ah, I don't care. Right? Because I know what I want. And I do not want to make a mistake. I didn't want to make a rush at it. I felt like I will cooperate with God. I will just be sure and know that this is the way to go. So if he is not waiting, he can leave when he wants to leave. Right? So when we do not wait, we make mistakes because we lack patience. In Hebrews chapter, Hebrews chapter 10, I guess, and verses 35 to 36. It says, cast not away therefore your confidence, which has a great recompense, yeah, which has a great recompense of reward. For ye need have patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise thereby. After you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise thereby. Abraham has to wait. God promised to Abraham was not just for him, but it was for all his descendants, including you and I. God's timing is perfect for you and I. Abraham had to wait for the fulfillment of God's promises, teaching us patience and trust in his divine plan. Abraham was faced with numerous challenges and delays, but remained faithful to God's promise. Abraham, regarded as patriarch of faith, faced several delays on his journey to the promise God had given unto him. But at the end of the day, he got there. So tell yourself, delay is not denial. Delay is not denial. So these delays illustrate the testing and growth in Abraham's faith and obedience, which is integral to his journey towards fulfilling God's promise. His endurance serves as an inspiration to us, illustrating the importance of unwavering faith in the face of adversity. Unwavering faith in the face of adversity. So when we wait, we will get it. Tell yourself, I will wait until I get it. I will cooperate with God until I get there. His promises for my life will not elude me. Your hardest season comes before your harvest season, brethren. Don't give up in hard times. Otherwise, you will fulfill or you will forfeit your harvest. Hang in there and you will receive what God has for you in Jesus' name. Is there anyone in the house who has been blessed one way or the other this morning? Can we wave our hands to the Lord and say, Father, I thank you because you are a faithful God. I thank you because, oh God, in this season, you will bring to pass what you have said concerning my life. Father, I thank you because, oh God, you are not a man. And you are not the son of man to repent. What you have said, oh God, you are able to bring to pass. Shall we please be upstanding? Shall we please be upstanding? We are going to talk to the name of the Lord. We are going to pray this morning. We are going to pray. I want us to begin to thank the Lord. 
I want us to begin to thank the Lord and say, Father, thank you for the opportunity to be reminded about your promises in the word of God. Thank you, O oh God, for the opportunity to be reminded of your word. Thank you because, O oh God, Lord God of heaven, what you have said regarding me, O oh God, you are going to do it. Everlasting Father, I give you praise. My Lord, I adore you. I thank you, O oh God. You will make all things, O oh God, to be beautiful in your own time. Daddy, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Father, we bless your name. Father, we are in your presence. Let it rain. Oh, your rain. Let it fall on us. We let it rain. Oh, your rain. Let it fall on me. Open, open the floor gate. Jehovah, in a bond. And cause your rain. Yes, you are the Lord. Yes, you are the 
Sotto Coria. The Lord asked me to tell someone here that according to his word, you will pursue. You will overtake. And without fall, you will recover all. He says you will pursue. You will overtake. And without fall, you will recover all. You will recover all. You will recover all. You will recover all. In the name of Jesus. You will turn it to prayer and say, Father, cause me to recover all. Cause me to recover all. Whatever that I have lost, oh God. Let my due season be now and let me recover all. In the name of the Lord Jesus, let me recover all. Let me recover all. Let me recover all. In the name of Jesus. Kabala Kalur Abayi Ali Ana Ambrobo Homayaka Satayeri Aba Eline Engeli Rida Baya Namos Conta Bayira Naka Santa Lady Nana Nam Robo Mayaka Sante Kelly Arabashinte Eliarana Uri Mayaka Sanda Eke Rima Masonto Korea Eke Kerina Masuko Baya Lamaneke Sonto Korea In the name of the Lord Jesus. Nema hangayani kasonto korobo shanta ya ekerina na masoko ya basanta in the name of Jesus in Jesus name we pray he asked me to tell someone he says sin it is a righteous thing for God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you he says he will recompense tribulation to every situation that is troubling you say father Recompense tribulation to every situation that troubles me. Go ahead and pray. That is the word of God for you. Every situation now that is troubling me, recompense tribulation according to your word. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, recompense tribulation to every situation hey, that troubles me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ma ambo koraba yara na kasanta ya aleria ma ya kalina bromo yikali abaya na sanda recompense tribulation to every situation that troubles me in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. He asked me to tell you that he will bruise the devil under your foot shortly. The Lord will bruise the devil under your foot shortly. The Lord will bruise the devil under your foot shortly. You now want to call upon the name of the Lord and say, Father, bruise every affliction under my feet right now. Go ahead and pray. In the name of Jesus, that he bruise every tribulation under my feet, oh God. In the name of Jesus, every issue that is bothering my life, rule them under my feet. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ma aboko robo shakali ya rabayana eli ya rana kasoto kuri ma ya na 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 yekeli nebromo shanta ya e mama kasoto kuri ya masu kuri ya baya kasanda in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ ma kusoko baya na na kasanda in Jesus name we pray. He asked me to let you know that there are some situation you are going through right now that want to embarrass you that want to put you to shame. But God will not allow that to happen. The law will not allow that to happen. You will call upon the name of the Lord and say, Father, every situation that wants to embarrass me, every situation that wants to make me to be, to, to be ashamed, Father, destroy them, disgrace them. In the name of Jesus, disgrace every situation around me, oh God, that want to embarrass me, destroy them. You will destroy them. You will put them to shame. In the name of Jesus, you will destroy them. You will put them to shame. You will destroy them. You will put them to shame. In the name of Jesus, you will destroy them. In the name of Jesus, Christ, you will put them to shame, oh God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, faithful Father. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I give you praise, O God. I give you praise, O God. I give you praise, O God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you for who you are. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Can you please open your Bibles with me to Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 34. Jeremiah 50 and verse 34. I'm rounding up right now. I'm rounding up. I'm rounding up. It says, their Redeemer is strong. The Lord of hosts is his name. 
it shall thoroughly plead their cause that he may give rest to the land and disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. Everything that represents the inhabitants of, ba of Babylon in your life, the Lord will disquiet them in Jesus' name. You say, Father, disquiet all oh God, every Babylonian issue in my life in the name of Jesus. Call upon the name of the Lord. That it disquiet them. Disquiet them. Plead my cause. 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 Plead my cause, oh God. Please, my cause in the name of Jesus. Plead my cause in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jehovah God. In Jesus' name, we pray. And finally, Isaiah 50 and verse 7 says, For the Lord God will help me. I think someone will say, For the Lord God will help me. Therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore have I set my face like a flint. And I know I shall not be ashamed. You want to confess the word of God and pray it into your life. Say, Father, you will help me, O oh God, and I will not be ashamed. In the name of Jesus, you will help me, O oh God, and I will not be ashamed.